And on this lovely sunny morning, we want to wish you the very, very best. Hope everybody is in good form and well today. Uh, we have a lot coming up on the show this morning. In a minute, I'm going to be talking, hopefully, to Michael O'Brien in Clonmel. Michael was on Questions and Answers a number of years ago, and he also has been on the documentary, the Redress Breaking the Silence documentary on RTE during the week. Niall Kane is going to talk to us about more dumping in around the Ballybeg area, and also I was talking to a lady yesterday about dumping in Clonmel. Ashmore. Have you ever been through any of the VTOS schemes, the VTOS, VTOS schemes? Well, we're celebrating 25 years of VTOS schemes. We're also up with the travellers in Carrick Fierish. Went up yesterday afternoon to talk to them. A lot of issues that people have been talking about around Carrick Fierish, and we were talking to the travellers directly about allegations that they might be involved in some of these uh, troubles and all sorts of stuff there. So we want to hear people's views on that. We're also going to talk about the planning application situation in Lemmy Brine. We're talking about World Book Day and we're talking about Cheltenham. We also want you to text us in, please. Give me a break. G-I-M-M-E, give me a break, to 083-333-975. Or you can call Audrey on 51 You can leave your name because today we have a lovely two-night breakaway with breakfast and one evening meal for two people. People, courtesy of Select Hotels of Ireland and this hotel today's prize is the Twin Trees Hotel in County Mayo a beautiful 54 bedroom family owned hotel with lots of character along the beautiful Brosna River and many waterfalls there as well so give me a break G-I-M-M-E give me a break 83 975 and you'll be in with a chance of entering and you'll be in then with the quiz and I see if you can get as many I think the six is the answers at the minute uh, we'll find out in a little while now firstly Michael O'Brien was on questions and answers he's the person who confronted Michael Dem- uh, Noel Dempsey at the time John Bowman was talking about the redress scheme and anybody who saw Breaking the Silence earlier this week. This is about people that got some money. Some people called it hush money. Some people called it dirty money from the, from the redress board uh, for institutional and state abuse. Some of it physical, some of it sexual, a lot of it emotional and certainly uh, abuse that lasted and is still, people are still suffering after many, many years. So, um, I'm going to try and talk to Michael now and some of this might be a little bit uh, difficult to listen to. So if anybody, like I said previously, a little bit of a health warning with this and his wife Mary might talk to us as well. Um, Michael O'Brien in Clonmel. Michael, you're on the line. Good morning, Michael. Not too bad at all. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. You're up and about. Nice morning in Clonmel this morning. Gorgeous, gorgeous is the world. And uh, you'll be relocating to Tremor uh, sometime in May, is it? Or when do, yes, when do you come down? April, around the 8th of April. Lovely. You have a mobile home there, is that it? I have, yeah, I have, yeah. How long have you had it, Michael? About 20 years. Very good. And uh, you you bought the mobile home with the the money or some of the money that you got from the uh, the That's redress right. board. Yeah. yeah. Why did you do that? Because I, I always liked one. I always liked one. I, I had a caravan. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I couldn't tow a caravan. I always had to get the son to tow, tow it to some place and they were there for a fall and then tow it somewhere else and they were there for a fall. So I said, the static one is the right idea with oil. Lovely. You know? And so I bought a mobile. And yourself and Mary? Uh, uh, they're in Atlantic View, beautiful place there. Very Being nice. near to see, you yeah. know, gorgeous place there, run by a family by the name of Gamble yeah. in Dublin. And yourself and Mary relocate there and you, you spend the summer there. Um, I suppose it brings a, a... It's nice to be beside the sea, is it? Oh, it's lovely. Oh, God, it's lovely. But it's a place to get a break away from the house and all that, you know. Just to get away from the routine, you know, and really mm. just relax and go and come when you please, like, you know. Yeah. Um, we come up to Clamell every Friday to collect my pension. Lovely. I was looking back on that piece that you said at the questions and answers, and one thing that struck me was, I suppose, the the party thing. You had said it to Noel Dempsey at the time, and Noel, obviously, a Fianna Fáil minister, and you were a, a former Fianna Fáil councillor and mayor in Clonmel. Yeah. 
Yeah. This idea, like you weren't one of these people that was just stirring it for the sake of it or it was an anti-government thing. Oh, this no, idea no, that no, you, no. Were a, you were a lifelong party member, that really struck with me as well because you yeah. hear things about people look after their own and all that sort of stuff. And here you were yeah. as somebody who'd given years of service to the party. Uh, why, did you, yeah. why did you mention the, the party thing that night? I just said to him, look, I'm a member of your party, you know, and before you actually, I said, I said, you know, I, I, I've been seen in for years. I joined Fianna Fáil just shortly after leaving the army because you can't join a political party when you're in the service of the army. Uh, that was 1973. You know? yeah. So um, I, um, I just said this to Mike, I'm a party member the same as you are, you know. Yeah. Do you think jo- he might be high up? He might have been high up, but I was, I, 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 I was the digger down, down the low ground, putting up the posts and all that. Hmm. And Michal Martin, Michal Martin was Minister for Health and Children at the time when this deal went through. Um, That's right. Do you still feel angry with the party and with the likes of Michal Martin because of that? I feel angry with the, what they've done. Not, I'm not angry with, with the person. I'm angry with what they've done. They done a deal without consultation. They yeah. should have met some of us and said, "This is the deal. Will we take it or will we not?" They just went in, done the deal, and the deal was not satisfactory. Yes. First of all, not one, not one, ever came for a judge for what was done in institutions, the rape and the buggery that was done in institutions to boys and girls. We must never forget the girls either, because I had three sisters in the institution, <laughs> uh, uh, you know. And they got away with it. This business, and they wouldn't even pay the amount of money they were asked. None of them went to jail. None of them even went into a court. They went in from Mickey Mouse court called uh, what they call it, redress board, and that. Yeah, they, they, they went, you know, that was carology in one sense. You know what I mean? Bringing them before that, you know, just, just discussing it as if it's a, a, a public a meeting, you know, just like a meet. Yeah, we heard from no a. No one ever said. No one ever said you're going down for two two years. What you've done to young people. You're going down for ten years. What you've done to young people. We heard no, we heard also yesterday, Michael, from a lady who was on the, the programme with me, Maria, and um, one of her friends had been in an institution in, 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 in the Waterford area, the county Waterford area, and um, her yeah. her her yeah. friend, yeah. A, a man, was taken out and uh, allegedly was, was raped by a, a guard in the 60s or the 70s. Um, so it wasn't just it wasn't just the people that were in the uh, institutions that were working there. It was others that would have been hanging around, you could say. Particularly in convents, they were brought actually brought in and allowed to interfere with them. And the priests coming in saying mass uh, interfered with gallows. I know that for a fact because I treat, as I said, I treat three sisters in an institution. Uh, two of them are dead now. I've only, only two of the 14 of our family are alive now, one, one sister and myself. You know, there was eight of us in an institution never heard of from any family in the whole country. That eight of us from the one family was institutionalized. The only reason they could find, and this was the, this, I have a copy of it, uh, orphaned but not destitute. Sorry, the other way around. Destitute but not orphaned. And that was the only reason that I was locked up for eight years with, uh, with my brothers and my sisters. For nothing. This country owe me. I owe this country nothing. They owe me for locking me up for eight years. Trust my family. They broke up my family. We have never met since that day that we were taken away from our house in Loch Lucre Care and we've never met. Me. <laughs> we've never met as a family again, and that happened just because our mother died. A cruelty man comes along and says, "You're going into an institution." His word was accepted, and that was it. We didn't see a judge. We didn't see a solicitor. We had no one to fight for us. And that was it. Can I ask you, Michael, 
there are, there, there are many instances of cruelty in the world in many different facets and many instances of kindness. And people talk about times being different. And sure, ah, sure, that was a different time. What about the idea that there's a, a basic moral code of right and wrong? And people know that they're doing wrong no matter what century it's in, no matter what decade it's in, no matter what era it's in. And if somebody harms a child, whether it be physical or sexual or emotional or mental, yeah. it's wrong, isn't it? They should be jailed, whether they're wearing a, a, a veil or a white collar. They should have been jailed for what they've done because the children in convents were abused as well, physically and some of them sexually. Now, this was done and a blind eye was, uh, was shown to it. Nothing else. They're, they're, we, we don't know them. They're not belong to Ireland at all. They, they, this, they'll die away. They'll die away and it'll all be forgotten about. Little did they think that would raise its ugly head many years later. Make, uh, which I didn't like to do, make a show of our country, our state, make a show of, it, of, of what went on and was allowed to go on. Because they knew, they knew what was going on and done nothing about it. And why? They locked up children for nothing. Uh, uh, have you ever didn't even make sure didn't even make sure that they were fed, clothed, and their health was looked after properly? And have you ever tried to stop and forget about it? Have you ever tried to ask Sorry. the question, Michael? I presume you ask it every day of your life. Why did they do nothing? Why? I or why? Ask or why? That every minute and hour of the day. Why did you not do nothing? <laughs> Touch a particular throat. Uh, the, the, the state never. You see, this is a black a black mark on the state. This is a black mark on the state. You see, and they never. They didn't want to raise that. That they were ahead of it. You know, they wanted to hide it the whole time. But the state is people. It's like it, systems are people. These are people. I hate this idea that people just say, "Oh, the state did this. The state did that." It's people that. Are, well, when I when I say the state, I'm talking about the people that run the state done this. Yes. Not the people of the state. The people that run the state. Yes. Done it. From the from the the, the, the t shirt down, was responsible for what was happening in this country at that time. And even today, I, I there are probably just children being abused today. It has. We have to stop. Children are very important people. They're human beings for first of all, but they're lovable people and must be cared for as lovable people. Not the way we were cared for. Can I ask you, um, Michael, there are others that are looking for justice across different aspects of society at present and they're also, you could say, taking on the state. And remember John McGuinness, the Fianna Fáil TD in saying to me in Kilkenny, he said uh, anybody who takes Gentleman. on the state yeah he is, anybody who takes on the state you're going to have a tough job because the state will try and grind you down, they'll try and make you forget about it they'll do everything in their power, even though they're saying they're on your side, they'll do everything in the power just to grind you down The state will hire the toughest legal person in the world, not, the, not just the country in the world <laughs> to take you on and to take you, take us on because we weren't educated for a start off. I have no certificates of education whatsoever, except that third class certificate that you get in the army when you when you do a little you're questioned about that and you do a sum and you spell a word or something like that. I got a, a third class certificate for that. The, the state allowed it happen. The, the, the people running the state allowed it happen. <laughs> Wow, you just wait like a small drink of water. Put, put, Mary on to me, put Mary on to me there for a second. Yeah. While I you're... don't think she'll talk to you. I'll try. I'll try. Hold on. Hello? Uh, answer this question anyway. Hello? Hello, Mary? Hello? How are you getting on? You're the, you're the martyr, Mary. Fair play to you. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Tell me, it's lovely, lovely to talk to you. Um, you'll be heading down to Tremor now in, in April or May, will you? We will, yeah, but please, God. And uh, 
your son uh, your son woman was divorced before that <laughs> you get up at half five every morning and you make him breakfast in bed fair play I was reared out where where were you reared Mary where was home for you very good and uh, how did you meet Michael in the first place where did you meet him was he in the army at that stage was I met him in Dublin I worked in the Matter Hospital at 13 years of age 13 years of age yeah and was it love at first sight I was a kind of you know I wasn't <laughs> too interested at that time I was how, too young I was just fun how long how long are you together Mary 65 years wow and have they been happy years have they been difficult years and difficult and I get over them fair play to you for, for looking after them is he? If, uh, d- oh, yeah, sure. uh, uh, he he's getting through it, is he? And you're getting through it. Oh yeah, trying to anyway. Doing has, my best. Has it been difficult, Mary? Yes, of course. I have four children, and I have eleven grandchildren and nine great grandchildren. So good family they support. Are to me, yeah, they're good. They're good. And when that thing happened on questions and answers all those years ago, did you? Oh, I know. <laughs> and you're looking at him kill him there. <laughs> you were sitting beside him in the audience there, and uh, did I you? Give him the elbow every five minutes. It was in mock. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and um, you've, you, you're obviously the rock that's kept him kept him sane through all this, Mary. Yeah, because we did, we did, we did. Like you had to suffer as well, because what ha- what happened to him? You had to, to share yeah. you had to share that burden, didn't you? I had, of course, yeah. We might see you in April or May down in Tremor. Um I'll I'll put me back to him there for a second and mind yourself, Mary. And you too. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. God bless. Bye bye. Hello, how are you? Good. I won't keep Hello. you long I, I won't keep you long there, okay. Michael. Yeah. No, Mary is a, no a, 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 a no she's a woman of, no she's problem. a woman of few words, I say she uh she oh, she's well, stoic. She don't go on the she doesn't go on the phone or anything. Ah, fair play to her. Unless, it, unless the call is especially for her. Ah, no, she's very good, and no. I know that's the that's the first time she's spoken. I'm very, qu- I'm very quiet. Very quiet, and that's what you want. That's the first time she ever spoke to anyone in the media. No, well, she never spoke to anybody in the media before. I'm honoured, and thank you so much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, we'll see yeah. you. We'll see you down in Tremor. I just got to ask you, Michael. Um, has there been much reaction since the program earlier in the week? And how are you I'll now? Get her. I got a lot of phone calls. I got a good few from those that were in institutions. Like, you know, I'm lying grand. I like, um, I, I'll take it on. Like, I'm tough enough to take it on. Like, you know what I mean? It, it, it's in your mind all the time. You know, what happens, you do suffer. Especially with, if, if, <laughs> if you're lying awake at night and things like that, it comes into your head, you know, that sort of thing. You never forget it, like, what happened to you. And probably I never will, or anybody that has happened to anyone I talk to say the same thing. They, they never forget it. No. Do you feel... I didn't mind getting hidings and all this thing without food for a day or something like that. But it was way out of order. Way out. Way out. Simply what? Way out. Do you, feel, do you feel sorry that your, your sisters died without them getting some sort of redress? Yeah, they, they, what, what did yeah, they? Two got they did. Yeah, the two got two brothers, three brothers, four brothers. Sorry. And they read this whatsoever. Yeah, you know, I'm just sad about that. Like right, that they didn't. Shocking, Michael. Will we'll, we'll see. We'll see you down in Tremor in in April or May. Okay. Please God, please God, mind yourself and be safe. Michael, thank you very much. Good morning, Damien, says this texter to Michael and his wife, Mary. I'd just like to say I watched the programme on RT the other night and the pain and hurt these children went through at the hands of these people whom are supposed to care for them is beyond anyone's comprehension. My heart broke with tears in my eyes in disbelief looking at this. Well done to each and every one for telling their stories and for not being ashamed of who they are. It's the perpetrators and the people who run this country should hang their heads in shame. That's a WhatsApp message. Another one, 83 975 text or WhatsApp. Michael Strent is a pure inspiration for anybody seeking justice and truth. The very best wishes to him. 
a number of people have texted in as well so terrible to be listening to that man but our politicians are quite happy to cover up so much when money becomes more valuable than people I haven't been able to go to church <clears throat> since all this came out excuse me I just think it's all about keeping their money both the state and the church Damien a great man and a lovely family God bless them all Damien anybody who did anything wrong in these times are parasites they must be charged under the Nuremberg Principles Articles 3 and 4 God bless all those poor folk that had the misfortune of being in institutions which were effectively sometimes like slave camps let us know what you think please and also keep texting in give me a break for the competition next have you ever seen or experienced illegal dumping now keep your texts and your comments coming in uh, Simon texted in Damien my hat goes off to this man and his wife and he's right the injustice still goes on other people texting about the coronavirus just listening to the news there and all the matches being held behind closed doors my worry is why in God's name are they holding Cheltenham races shortly thousands of Irish heading over there wondering with a large cluster of virus when they return uh, is it more about people money than people's lives that's from Jim we're going to be talking to some people who are uh, talking about Cheltenham in a little while so let us know what you think about that is it right that Cheltenham should be going ahead uh, will we overreact to this what is the situation anybody who heard a bit of live line yesterday there was um, panic stations um, spoke to a woman yesterday and uh, she didn't receive Holy Communion at Mass yesterday morning because um, she's just worried doesn't want to receive Holy Communion in case God forbid somebody that the, the priest might have the virus um, is it affecting people like you out there let us know please 083 33 33 975 um, my sister has a kennels up in Wicklow she just texted there a while ago saying a lot of people are cancelling their bookings for the summer and she'll have to repay the deposits and it's going to affect her thousands thousands of euros so it's having an effect on so many different businesses already um, that you wouldn't even think about Next, we're going to talk about illegal dumping. We did a video uh, around four weeks ago and did a piece with Niall Kane and all the lads in the council who are trying to stop illegal dumping. It was up around the Ballybeg area and Niall has just sent me pictures and I'm going to uh, send out those pictures now on Facebook of more illegal dumping at the exact same spots. And this is like lots of bags and dirty stuff and horrible, horrible stuff. Uh, Niall Kane from Waterford Council is on the line. Niall, good morning. Good morning. Tell me, where are you this morning? Are you out and about looking for illegal dumping? Well, there's, there's like it's always just something that uh, pops up every morning. So there's, there, we have a, a crew of lads that go around looking for, cleaning it up, checking for evidence, and, and uh, trying to catch the culprits. We spoke uh, around a month ago, and you brought me to a site just on the outskirts of Ballybeg there, where people had done some illegal dumping, uh, some horrible stuff, and plastic bags and bottles and cans and dirty nappies and all sorts of things. You cleaned it up that day and we did a video on it. Uh, what happened over the last few days? Well, we've had a, a recurrence of the dumping at that location. We've had even more than was there when the, the day uh, you visited uh, with us. So, uh, it's like it's, 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 unfortunately, it's a recurring problem in, in, in certain areas where people, you know, who choose not to use bins and not to use uh, uh, reputable bin companies you know, end up with uh, their waste dumped in places like this. We've posted and we're posting those uh, pictures up on Facebook. You've cleaned it up now. But uh, there was a lot of a lot of work went into dumping all that rubbish at that particular site. It's uh, just on the the ring road, I saw, so the, the, the road around Ballybeg Estate. And uh, I suppose at the, uh, the, the, the one end of the estate, the opposite end of the fire brigade station um, a lot of work went into that that was well planned well it's, it's certainly you know it, it, someone went to a bit of effort to bring it in there and, and they threw it all in over the verge there in, in, into the the, the, the vacant uh, ground there so like yeah there was a, a lot of work in it like you know so it's not it's not a, it's not a, a one or two bags that someone's just uh, quickly thrown out of a car like you know they, they were there for a few minutes doing it and have you or did you have to go through all the bags an awful job to do to try and find uh, any kind of address or anything to link the perpetrators. Well, the, the lads will be, will be searching that now and, 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 and looking for it now. I haven't got the results of that search yet so, uh, from the lads, but uh, they'll, um, they'll, they'll have searched that. But another thing we'll be doing is that we, we brought in, uh, the, the council brought in bylaws in 2018 uh, requiring people to, to be able to demonstrate how they're disposing of their waste. 
you know, so they have to basically either show that they're using a, a reputable bin company or that they're bringing waste to a civic community site or, or a, you know, a, one of these pay to use compactors and they're keeping receipts. So, um, you know, we can come along to any house and we, we'll be doing that in this area, you know, uh, in, the, in, the, in the coming weeks, uh, asking people to show how, how they're managing their waste, how they're getting rid of their waste. And if they don't, or if they can't demonstrate how they're getting rid of their waste, there's a 75 euro on the spot fine can be issued to them. So that's one of the th- things we're doing there to try and, and uh, to, to target people who are either using illegal collectors or, or dumping on their own behalf. Why do you think, Niall, that it is somebody local? Well, I suppose it, 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 there's a, you know, it could well be someone from locally who's collecting in other places or it could be uh, people that are local. But people, that we, you know, they tend to go somewhere they know when they're dumping. It's not someone that they're going to go where, especially when you, when you have... Uh, houses across the road but you know you're not going to go there if you're a stranger you know we're yeah. going to be, be stand out like a sore thumb so it has to be someone that's local so that's why we'll target the, 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 the local houses in that area there okay uh, looking, looking for that so in the next few weeks you'll have your staff literally going door to door in and around the Ballybeg area asking residents to produce receipts from their refuse companies or whatever the case may be is that it? that's it yeah and have you done this before? We've uh, we, we, like we, we started this there uh, late last year. We've been going to people. We like it, well, so what we start off, we write them a letter and ask them to, to uh, tell us who their bin company is or what they're doing with their waste. You know, uh, when someone says that they're with a particular bin company, we can check with that and verify that. Uh, if someone doesn't reply to us, then we'd call, we'd call to the houses and we'd, and we'd ask people what they're doing with their waste. And sometimes they haven't replied, but they you know they have got a bin. But uh, you know, you know, and the, the idea is people have to have a bin or be managing their waste appropriately. Yeah, and in this case, will you just forget about the writing to people? Will you go straight to the, to people's doors? Well, the, the, the letters that have already gone out now at this stage, uh, like this, uh, we, this was discovered there two days ago, so the letters would have gone out yesterday. So they should be all getting those letters today. Okay. Uh, so they will give them two weeks to, to tell us who they're managing their, their bins with, give us their, their account number with the bin company. And, um, you know, anyone we don't get responses from within the two weeks, we'll be caught knocking on the door. How many letters? How many houses, Niall? Uh, I'm, it's, it's about 60, I think, we, we, we targeted there. We did some before Christmas in a different area, in, in, in different areas around the county. You know, so, um, but like, you know, we, we've sent out hundreds of letters at this stage looking for this uh, evidence from people. And uh, you haven't had any prosecutions or on-the-spot fines yet, have you, or have you? We have issued, uh, I think one fine has been issued to date, but uh, others, you know, we're still in the process of giving them time to, to respond. And uh, just to go back to the uh, your colleagues that have to sift through these rubbish bins, that's an awful job. That's a shocking job, isn't it? It is, you know, and like it's, especially if the, if the waste has been held for a while, like, you know, it's smelly, it's, it, it, you know, and, and it's potentially dangerous, like, you know, you, you know, uh, Sometimes there's, there's needles in it. There's, there's like if you look at coronavirus now, if it's thing, you know, you can pay, like you know people might have uh, dirty tissues or something like that. And it's like you know, so the lads have to wear proper PPE. They're wearing masks. They're wearing goggles. And they're searching this. You know, they have to make sure they're taking the uh, appropriate protection for themselves. Like you know, do some people complain uh, that? If bin collections were free, if we returned to a day where there was no bin charges, that none of this would happen. Well, there's, there's people who will say that. Like, uh, that's not a common uh, I can uh, say, but I know from a lot of legal dumping we see, we see things like bottles and cans, which can be brought free of charge to, to, to civic convenience sites. We see electrical goods, which can be brought free of charge to, uh, to civic convenience sites. So, like, if there's already some waste streams are free, but they're still being illegally dumped. So, like, I don't know if the, um, you know, would it make that much of a difference if it was free? It might make some difference, but it's, uh, yeah. you know, unfortunately, it's so, like there's no such thing as a free lunch. Someone has to pay for it in whichever way it's paid for. So a mixture of blackguarding, laziness, and sheer absent-mindedness. Yeah, absolutely. And can I ask you finally, I was talking to somebody in Clashmore yesterday and uh, she was telling me that she walks around the... The, the the village and around I suppose outside of the village and goes for walks in the morning with some friends and there are problems in certain areas with fly tipping as we call it. Um, do you respond to complaints and requests from members of the public to say that there's rubbish in this area or that area? 
We do, yeah. So anyone who, who rings in, they can ring into our, our customer uh, care centre on uh, 0761-10-2020, and anything that any complaints we'll get, we are logged, and then they're allocated to someone to go and check it out. You know, to uh, to go and, and search that uh, evidence for evidence to clean it up. Niall Kane, thank you so much for joining us this morning, and uh, mind yourself with all that rubbish there, particularly if there's needles and dirty stuff, isn't that it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Damien. No, thank you very much for that. And uh, Paul is trying not to laugh as we link into the next one. That right, Paul? That's right, Damien. Thanks very much for not laughing. No <laughs> cursing in studio. Um, Damien asked that man about free collections of the Carrick Fierish Road, where travellers put their rubbish on a regular basis. Damien, they could go to the halting side as well, or would that be racist? No, it is not racist to talk about rubbish being dumped in any particular area by any particular group of people. What is racist is if you target people and say they are only responsible for the dumping. But the council have told me that there's loads of people that are dumping illegally, whether it be travellers or not travellers. Simple as that. Another man has texted me from a... John phoned in from the Comera group, has been cleaning up the Comers and around the area since 1996 and people haven't got any better. The only way, he says, is to name and shame and find the people responsible. Damien can ask the people to send out letters to all the different housing estates around Waterford City and County because there's illegal dumping going on everywhere. Others say, can I just say it's a shame on people dumping. It's just as dirty rubbish. It's horrendous. It shouldn't be done whatsoever. Other people then texting in about Cheltenham should be called off. Many people have underlying health issues and that it's all about the money. Other people texting, I think the price of bins is crazy. First, you have to pay to even get a company. You have to then pay for small bins, large bins, and then some of the recycling you have to pay for as well. Uh, And finally, on the issue regarding residential abuse in schools and in institutions. Damien, if you were poor in those days, you just got hammered in school with a stick. But the children of local wealthy people, Gardaí or farmers, they escaped and grew up mounting praise on the nuns and on the teachers saying they had a great education. It can be sickening listening to some of those people. Damien, the only way to sort out these savages, savages that do the fly tipping, is to catch them and find them €10,000, take all the money from them. No council worker should have to pick up after these savages. There's a strong word, lady, savages, huh? Strong word, isn't it? People are getting very animated. Please text us 83 975 Paul is about to get animated. Now, keep your texts and your comments coming in 83 975 You can call Laura or Audrey even on 51 123 Damien, why should Cheltenham be called off? Everything is fine at the minute. Uh, we're panicking too much. Damien, the council collect the bins at the halting sites for free. Damien, how many people have been prosecuted over fly tipping? Damien, look at the state of the place up around the Grace You Road this morning. Grace You Road, it's this morning, rubbish everywhere and crap. That's from Paddy. I presume that means dog poos. Uh, Damien, I think the price of bins is crazy. Mary asks, she phoned in, could the council get someone who's on the dole to do a bit of research to see how many people do not have bins. Well, as you heard there, the council have sent out this week 60 letters to different families and households to see if they have receipts for refuse charges. Helena Finley, good morning. Good morning. Marianne Heafy, good morning. Good morning. Paul Dower, good morning. Good morning. Paulus Dauros. Paulus Dauros. Helena, VTOS coordinator. Tell me a little bit, please, that people that don't know what VTOS is. Well, it's the Vocational Training Opportunity Scheme and we have been offering full-time adult education courses that teach practical skills to the unemployed in Waterford for the last 25 years. 25 years? Yes, and I've been there all the time. Um, since 1994, we began originally in College Street and uh, we were, we, and then we relocated to Durand's Court in Parnell Street in 2007. And VTOS, essentially, what we do is we provide... Uh, training courses, QQI level 5 standard, but we do it in two years, not in one year or 26 weeks. So when you come into our courses, you learn and gain practical skills that you can progress onto employment, further education or set up your own businesses. And it's open, as I said, to the unapplied, but it's also, and this is really important because a lot of people don't know, if you are a dependent spouse or a partner of an unemployed person, you can act, you can apply for visas. If you're on job seekers benefit, you can apply for visas and keep your payment for the two years. If you're on credits, you can apply for visas, and that's really important to actually keep applying for credits. Marianne, 
the revamp tramp. That's right, yeah. <laughs> tell us about the revamp tramp and tell us about how VTOS has helped you. Uh, well, re- revamp tramp, I upcycle furniture, I run workshops, so I upcycle furniture and commissions and sell on. Um, I suppose I'd have to go back 10 years right in the middle of the recession and uh, like a lot of people, I found myself unemployed and uh, I don't like to sit still for too long so I saw an ad in the paper for the VTOS course interior design and I decided to apply and it just brought a spark of creativity that I'd lost over the years again and uh, I thought I'd do it for the two years and get back into employment but I ended up doing the VTOS course finding myself back in college for another four years and then setting up my own business so it was really the start of where I am now. Anybody who has been on a VTOS course, please text us in 83 975 text or WhatsApp. We want to hear from you because there's been so many stories over the years of joy and happiness where people have, uh, I suppose, got so much out of VTOS. Paul, you're with Waterford in your pocket. Why is VTOS important? You've been around the city and county quite a lot, covering so many events over the years. And a lot of people have come through VTOS. Why do you think it's important? Including myself. Yes. And that's why I'm here this morning because... As you know, I lived in Germany for a long time. When I came home, I failed my leaving start twice because I failed maths. And I did want to go on and do something in business in, in WRTC at the time. But I said we went to Germany. Now, when I came back, um, I saw there was a leaf that came in through the door about VTOS and the business course that they were running. And I said, yes, I'm going to go for this now. I didn't look back since because, first of all, I was at an age that I wanted to do something. I mean, like, if I had to go into WRTC at the time at 18, I probably would have only lasted six weeks, I'll be quite honest with you, because I would have been at every party and in the pub in the night time and everything else. But this is something that really opened my eyes, even reading the newspaper, reading between the lines and all that. But the the supports that I got down there, I mean, in, I was down there in 2004, 2006. My wife, Jean, was diagnosed with cervical cancer in 2005. And she was in St. Luke's up in Dublin for over six weeks. And my two kids at the time were only four and six. But the support I got, not only from the tutors, but everybody in VITAS at the time was just absolutely amazing. But then the, the step on, I wanted to go on and, and study. So I went on and did a degree in international business in WIT and studied masters as well. And even through that, then UCD, a couple of postgrads and all that, it's just changed my life. And even though everything is marketing based, now you could see that the evolution of War From Your Pocket all started with things that I learned at, uh, with Vitas. You've probably seen so many oh, I have. stories like what... Mm. Paul and Marianne. And, and yeah, they, it must yeah, be very rewarding. It's extremely rewarding. I mean, the last couple of years too, we have a lot of kind of retired, you know, uh, bank workers who became redundant and they need to come to us and learn, you know, office skills, computer skills, such as payroll, medical terminology. So they can go on and find, retrain and find other jobs. We have people due to ba- ill health would have to leave their jobs, for example, nurses. Again, they come in and retrain. And we are giving them the opportunity to retrain, to go into employment. And you have, and our graduates have, have went up to employment in both public and private organisations, such as the hospital and, you know, Cork Road with the government offices. So over the years, they have progressed to employment. Then also other people like Marianne and, and Paul have set up their own bits, businesses. And, uh, and, we, and also we work very closely with the local enterprise office. Mm. They've been brilliant. They come in and actually do workshops with us every year for the last five years. And that is brilliant. We also, they work with us in giving placements in the Kite Design Centre. So all this is really helping yeah. people to develop their skills. And I think it's really important that we kind of support war, you know, business in Waterford, get people to start their own businesses and then education both Marianne and Paul went on to further education. We give the skills that students can stay in the degree and be successful. And for P- I've done pieces on VTOS before and what, what happens as well, and Paul mentioned it, that idea that um, you're so experienced, Alina, that you can talk to people and if it doesn't suit them, you can advise somewhere else to do or, or, or another course to do and stuff like that. Marianne, this idea of personal help and literally kind of one-to-one tutoring so important. It's really important. Um, and it was just something I wanted to add, like there about the VTOS course. It's not even all the skills you learn. It's the confidence it gives you back as well in yourself. Because, I mean, if you were like myself and found yourself unemployed for the first time, 
it's not somewhere where I would ever think of going straight back into WIT or something like that. I wouldn't have had the confidence. So with something like VTOS is it really, really gives you that confidence to be able to go on yeah. and further yourself yeah, again. Exactly. So it is absolutely vital. And, and that is the main point there because for the simple oh, fact that you learn from the confidence because you're not only the new skills but the new ideas how to think differently how to open your mind not to be blinkered anymore and all these things coming together like it's that, that eclectic mix is very very important and as I said I would have never went to college only for my eyes were opened and then with the help of the tutors and everybody at Vitas I went on and as I said I can't look back All the girls in Vitas fashion uh, year two are listening in loving the course loving the radio chats and loving life <laughs> so hello to all those in uh, fashion year two and all the years there Oh, they're very busy at the moment. They're going to have a fashion show next week. But they shouldn't be listening to the radio. Is that what you're saying? Oh, they're back to work. Yeah, exactly. They have a fashion show, <laughs> let me say, work. from 7 to, t- um, 7 to 10 next week in the Gateway Centre. Oh, yeah, let's so give it a it's, plug. It's a part what, of the work experience. What nights? Seven it's Tuesday, Tuesday, 7 to 10 in the Gateway Centre. Okay. And they're working really hard. I'm very, very proud of them. So anybody who's around next Tuesday, get up to the Gateway Centre and see a bit of fashion. A beautiful. They're, they don't, don't... Something I know nothing about with my Well, I can tell you, <laughs> if you want to come, Joe will teach you how to sew and amazing we don't don't just teach them how to sew we actually learn teach um, students to actually do their own patterns that they don't actually copy the pattern to do it My mummy had a sewing machine and I never got into that now she showed me how to knit but I wasn't great at it I was showing her how to knit as a kid as well Are you? Yeah. Yeah And these knitting jumpers and, and oh God, and the, you'd wash them once and they'd shrink and oh my genie, Mac. <laughs> or they sp- well, I shrink or stretch. Style Jesus, and yeah. glamour. Yeah. <laughs> Marianne, uh, this idea of confidence, anybody who's out there listening and thinking, okay, that sounds great, but Marianne is on the radio. She's the confidence to come in to do this. You're the confidence to set up your own company. You weren't always like this. No, I mean, this is 10 years in the making yeah. from when I first applied to VTOS to sitting here now in radio studio, yeah. you know. So, I mean, it's not something that will happen overnight. But And you do, you have to work hard to get there, but you have to start somewhere. To start somewhere. And VTOS is the best place to start for any any these type of skills just um, you know the start of skills it's a mm. great way to learn whether it's something you're interested as well in you know like for me it was interior design I wasn't sure whether I would be interested but this was a great way to find out whether I was going to be interested in it or not Because Paul again you come across a lot of people in your public mm. sphere that you'll see people at different levels of confidence somebody can be quite confident at one, one year and then some they get knocked back Yeah, yeah. Mm. and they think and they can get depressed. They can get just different things can happen. It could Quite be at any stage yeah. in their life. I mean, life can get in the way. Let's be honest about yeah. it. And this is what I found with Vitas as well. I mean, life got in the way with my family and at, at that stage. And the supports were there. And that's what builds the confidence. But also as well with the courses. I mean, information, knowledge is power, as they always say. Now, knowledge is power in the right way for the confidence. Because if you know what you're talking about, it's very easy to talk about it. And that's the beauty of it. And that's, I suppose, my, myself and Marianne, that's what we got out of it. We got that confidence to be able to turn around and say, I know this subject matter now. I know how to talk about it. And there's no problem. And I can answer the questions. How do people get in touch? Well, they can pick up the phone and phone us at 051 852 803. 852? 803. It's called Pinton or, um, or myself. They can call into Durant's Court. They can look up our website, adulteducationcentre.ie. Um, we're always delighted to help people and give them information. Um, uh, that's what we're there for. We're mm. there to support. And uh, it's just, it is great. I have to say, after you know, to celebrate 25 years and everybody's successes, it doesn't matter. It's another, you know, it's another year. Some people would have that approach, but it's very, very special. Even having Marianne and Paul talking here and and you showing the interest it is makes it shows how important Vitas and how much it has to offer to people. It's after changing people's lives. Let's be honest about it. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's changed my life yeah. anyway. Yeah. Absolutely. And of course, I have to say, I have to say a big thank you to the staff, Finton and the teachers, because it, the teachers are what make it happen. So, um, and that's really important to acknowledge that. Thank you. Helena Finley, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Marianne Heafy, thank you very much. Thank you. Paolo De <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> On the ball, bye. <laughs> 
Now, welcome back to the programme. Damien, please read out the college number again for VTOS. It is 051 852 803. 852 803. Uh, if you don't remember that, just type in VTOS, VTOS Waterford, into your, your Google machine later. Damien, my daughter had to drop out of college due to illness. She did a fashion course in VTOS, had a wonderful two years. She's now doing a performing art, arts course. That is in from Teresa. Other people texting in about how VTOS has changed their lives for the best. Damien, regarding Cheltenham, of course it should go ahead, says Jur in South Tip. I have a DNA share in Pentland Hills in the Champion Hurdle next Tuesday. Good luck to him. So is it all about money? Should it be about public health? Let us know, please. 08... Three double three double three nine seven five. Our final call out for "Give Me a Break." We're going to have our competition winner after the news at eleven, and also our visit to the halting site in Carrickfearish.